During the office hours, Dartmouth edition. My name is Clark Moore, and I'm a 13 at Dartmouth, which makes me a sophomore. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm majoring in history modified with art history. On campus, I'm a member of the Dartmouth Airs, which is Dartmouth College's oldest all-male a cappella group, and I also write for the paper. And today, I am joined by two guests, Amy and Chris, who will now introduce themselves. I'm Amy Newcomb. I work at the Dickey Center for International Understanding at Dartmouth. I coordinate a lot of our student programs, both on campus and off campus. Hi, I'm Chris Hahn. I'm an 11, which makes me a senior. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, and I am a double major in economics and geography, trying to study uh, international development and public health through two different frameworks. On campus, I'm involved uh, in, in, a, in a Greek house, um, Sigma Phi Epsilon, and uh, the alumni relations uh, student groups, the Hillwind Society. And a big part of what I do on campus is working for the Tucker Foundation, our center for spiritual, spirituality and service. Um, a, a great place to go for global learning, which is why I'm here today. Thank you. So today uh, we're talking about international opportunities here at Dartmouth. And I want to take, take a moment to remind you um, to post questions in the chat. And we will answer them um, right away. So um, yeah, so this is the topic of our, of our, of our um, show. So do you want to tell a little bit about what you do here at Dartmouth in terms of international opportunities? Absolutely. So the Dickey Center is uh, one of just one of the many centers on campus that um, provides opportunities for students to not only uh, engage in international options here on campus through courses. We have an international studies minor at the college that's open to any student of any major. Um, we also um, have a variety of special guests and, and student organizations and, and various other opportunities that students can really um, use as a way to internationalize their experience and their four years at Dartmouth. But we also uh, provide a lot of support for students to get abroad. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's something that's uh, quite unique at Dartmouth. There's so many different places and ways to get out and to, to incorporate an experience in the world into your course of academic study. Absolutely. So um, how many study abroad opportunities are there here at Dartmouth? <sighs> I, I don't know exactly in terms of sort of how to count them up, but I know that students can uh, they can study abroad with a language focus, um, okay. study abroad with a particular academic focus. So we have what we call FSPs, which are foreign study programs um, that take you all around the globe for a term, and you get academic credit to uh, continue your coursework um, in, in a particular area. Uh, we also have a variety of internships and fellowships that are supported around campus. There's alternative breaks, so over the short, um, you know, stints when when the college is not in session, there's opportunities to get abroad, and and most of those are very service focused. Some that are um, focused more on sort of the spiritual side of things. Most of those uh, come out of the Tucker Foundation. Um, and, and there's also uh, opportunities to do transfer terms or to research abroad. I think uh, that's one really wonderful way that students actually get out into the world, too, is to, to be funded to go and undertake either independent projects or faculty mentored research projects around the globe. Very nice. Great to hear. Um, Chris, can you tell a little bit about your experience with international opportunities at Dartmouth? Yeah, I, I'd say that international opportunities is one of the major reasons that I came to Dartmouth. Um, even coming off as, as Amy said, the uh, the first kind of little break was after my freshman uh, fall term. I went with a senior to do research in the Dominican Republic. Oh wow! Then went again with an alternative spring break trip uh, to the Dominican Republic that spring break. Um, I think that there's there's just so many different places, and the place that I work, the Tucker Foundation, which is the, our center for um, service and spirituality, is another one of those homes for for global learning um, with kind of groups that talk about global issues on a weekly basis, um, local service that kind of draws parallels between international issues and those issues that we face here in the Upper Valley or Absolutely. in America. And um, also these, these trips and, and kind of uh, longer term fellowships and internships that, that we send students on for eight to ten weeks, a full Dartmouth term, where they get to kind of enact the uh, the lessons that they take in the classroom, uh, things that they practice here through student groups, really get to act as global agents for change um, through their, their off-term experiences. Yeah, I think that what you guys are both talking about is so amazing to hear about all the non-academic ways to go abroad at Dartmouth, um, especially when you pair them with 
the many academic ways to go off campus. There are 42 um, off campus programs. You're mentioning the foreign study programs. There are 42 programs offered throughout the different departments here at Dartmouth, and 60% of all students study abroad once um, during their four years here, and 30% study abroad twice. So um, that's something that's really amazing that Dartmouth students really are taking advantage of these many different opportunities, whether they be academic or um, co curricular opportunities. Um, one thing that's also really Really important to mention about that is that um, your tuition stays the same whether you are here in Hanover or doing a geography FSP in Prague for instance you your um, financial aid transfers so that's really a really great opportunity as well another great thing that I think a lot of students are surprised to find when they first get to Dartmouth is that um, there are at least four or five different places on campus where students can take uh, a leave term, whether it's a summer off, mm -hmm. and they can actually receive funding up to $4,000 to go off and, and undertake an unpaid experience. So if yeah. that's for some doing something that's very service oriented and, and wanting to make a difference in a, in a community abroad, or if it's just pursuing um, an academic or potentially, you know, sort of trying out a fit for a career, um, there's, there's so many funds available each year. I know our center alone, you know, sends about 75 students a year out to do funded opportunities that, that they design themselves. It's really amazing. Yeah, that is really amazing, the, the funding opportunities. Yeah. Um, Chris, have you ever done any study abroad um, things? Yeah, I, my junior year, I had an awesome uh, kind of year traveling around. I didn't spend more than two and a half months in, in one place. Wow. Uh, my junior fall, I did the... Uh, exchange program to the University of Copenhagen yeah. where I study economics and, and public health in the welfare state. So just a completely different paradigm from what we're using here or, or what I learned about um, through my other kind of off-campus experiences in the Caribbean and, and around the country. Um, then in the winter I came back here and, and took uh, some courses related to health policy and, and, um, and the anthropology of, of health and illness. Um, got to take a class with the former Surgeon General's son, uh, Ed Koop, on uh, the history of the American medical system, and then went to Uganda with uh, Tucker, the, the, my, my center's um, funding, to work with a Peace Corps on public health projects around HIV AIDS. So wow. I got to have this like, comparative um, experience throughout uh, an entire year. Then I went back home to work for the summer um, in my hometown in, in economic development and community development. It was, it was a really cool experience and definitely wouldn't have been able to have such a, a great comparative year if it wasn't for the funding opportunities, if it wasn't for um, the exchange programs, the relationships that Dartmouth has with different universities, as well as its own programs. Um, you can, for the FSPs and LSAs, uh, you go with only Dartmouth students, with a Dartmouth professor, um, and, and take classes abroad. Um, with with a, a really kind of tight knit community, but then there's also exchange programs uh, where you are just another student at a different university, um, really getting to kind of immerse yourself and, and independently operate. But a lot of those exchanges also have um, reserve spots for a certain number of Dartmouth students, so you get a little Dartmouth community there as well. Yeah, that's so exciting. I, I know a couple people who did um, exchanges to Barcelona in the past this past winter, and it was just an amazing experience. Um, for them. I went the summer after my freshman year. I did the Russian language study abroad program in St. Petersburg, Russia, and I'm going on the foreign study program with the history department in the fall of next year. So that kind of gives you an, um, an idea of the different kinds of programs offered just in terms of you can study language or you can um, go on programs that aren't language based. Um, and also one thing that's really exciting to me about Dartmouth is that there, there are certain majors that are more time intensive, like the engineering major, for instance, where oftentimes people at other schools can't get off campus or have to stay on campus because they have to fulfill their requirements. But Dartmouth has its own engineering exchange where the engineering students can go um, study in Thailand, I believe it is. And um, it's, a, it's a great way to be able to fulfill your requirements and do a really hard major, but um, also get abroad. So that's really exciting. There's also engineering is a great example of the way um, another way that Dartmouth is unique with study abroad
abroad too that there's so many ways even within the sciences that students are even undertaking their own projects abroad and then finding ways to go out and um, have international experiences that connect back so we have a, an engineering organization that's all student run um, and they are working on clean water projects and clean stove projects where the students are designing in their courses um, uh, you know site specific uh, you know engineering uh, models and, 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 and opportunities for, for them to sort of take what they're what they've built and what they've learned and then deliver it in a community yeah. and show the community how to take those things on and embrace it and, and make Maybe make a, a positive impact, um, you know, through through um, either you know clean cook stoves, you mm -hmm. know, various things. It's 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 really exciting. So people are finding a lot of interesting ways to to incorporate international study. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about um, service trips through Tucker? Some of the different programs that are run. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, the Tucker Foundation. Every term, every uh, little interim period between terms is uh, sending students out for uh, different off-campus learning, integrated learning experiences. Um, one of the major programs is the Tucker Fellowship Program, which provides funding of up to $4,000 for students to independently work with a non-governmental organization literally anywhere in the world, um, so long as it's safe and so long as there's a good organization to work with. Um, another program is the Nicaragua CCESP, which stands for Cross-Cultural Education and Service Project, um, which is one of the kind of uh, longitudinal relationship building programs that Dartmouth has with a really small community in Ciuna, Nicaragua. Um, it's been running for about 10 years, and um, every year Dartmouth, uh, a team of Dartmouth students pairs up with faculty, um, med medical students, just really get a, a nice holistic team um, to, to work on community health and development projects in this in this small community in Nicaragua. Then there's just a, a whole host of alternative spring break programs um, that cater to so many different interests. Uh, one goes to San Francisco that's uh, surrounded around uh, homelessness and, and spirituality. Mm -hmm. Another works with um, immigrant uh, farm workers in Immokalee, Florida. Um, the one that I was involved with my freshman and sophomore years goes to a Haitian community in the Dominican Republic oh, wow. um, to address community health and, and development needs and, and really work in partnership, kind of uh, really community-driven projects um, from in, in partnership with these organizations. It's, it's pretty fantastic with these organizations. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty fantastic with these organizations. Yeah, no, it's a team to um, work on uh, cemeteries that were damaged during the Holocaust in a, in a project called Project Preservation. Um, there's really so many. There's even domestic programs here. The Dartmouth Partners and Community Service uh, provides for up to $4,000 in funding for students to work domestically in service. Um, it's just a really cool way to integrate your classroom experiences with with the world. There's Absolutely. Yeah. Ab thank you so much. That's so much information. I didn't even know that all those programs <laughs> existed. I knew about a number of them, you know, like I have had friends who have gone on the Nicaragua um, trip and, and done alternative spring break, but it's it's so amazing that the number of opportunities here really are limitless. Um, one thing that I think is really interesting about Dickey is that uh, you guys have a folder with um, past experiences. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, and I and the Tucker Foundation has, you know, quite a similar resource. Um, one of the things that um, we really try to do is when students, you know, we get students all the time coming in our door saying, I, I know I want to go abroad, but I'm not sure exactly what I want to do, what have other people done, what's mm -hmm. been meaningful, because I think if you're going to take that leap, and especially if you want to do it outside of a structured program, and you've done both, so, you know, you, you know, sort of jumping in and doing something on your own can be a little bit scary, so you want to know, like, what have other people done? Who can I talk to? So we keep a number of resources at the Dickey Center so students can come in and we can point them towards opportunities that students have taken advantage of in the past, whether it's just to have a conversation with someone to say, how might I find something similar? Or was that an organization that you'd go back and work with again? Right. Um, it's a really wonderful resource, and you can find a, a lot of information about um, opportunities. And, and um, we also uh, we, we find that through all the different centers on campus, wherever some wherever a student walks in, we're, we all work very closely with one another. And so we, we really try to direct people to the most um, you know 
applicable resources as possible. So sometimes that's the Tucker Foundation, sometimes it's the Dickey Center, sometimes it's you know the the Rockefeller Center or other places on campus. There's just right. a wealth of people and resources here that that provide support for those types of things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I want to remind you guys to continue if you have any questions. Um, we've been talking a lot about all these different opportunities here, and I know it's probably a lot of information to absorb. But if you have any any specific questions about uh, study abroad at Dartmouth whether they be through service or through international understanding or through off-campus programs, um, we're happy to answer any of those questions as well. Um, yeah, so so this folder yes. that you have at Dickey, um, how, how in-depth does it go in terms of like, you know, do you say like this is something that someone else has done, like copy this or do people bring their, like, what is your when yeah. someone comes in? What is your suggestion? Really good question. It's funny because I was just having this conversation over in the in the office before I came over here. You know, different people want different things out of it. Some people want an immediate answer to say, "Here are places that students have gone to and they've you know come back and they've said this is wonderful. I would go back again." So we see you know that sometimes it's it's just you know a, a place of reference to say this organization checks out as a good place right. to work or this company or whatever it might be. Because um, you know for us at the Dickey Center, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's service focused. But just an international opportunity. We want to send people into a new cross-cultural setting. Um, but I think one of the most uh, helpful parts of this is that we also keep on on file, and the Tucker Foundation does this as well. The final reports that students write when they come back, mm -hmm. and so those are made available as well, so that students can come in and say, "Oh, that that global health opportunity sounds really interesting. Let me read about that and see if if that seems fitting for me." So there's a narrative there as well as you know sortable resources resources by country or by topic area um, in terms of what people might might want to do um, if I can I'd mention one other um, quick uh it's the thing, you know, there's so many on-campus opportunities, but one of the really exciting things at the Dickey Center uh, in the past two years is we've we've started this program for incoming first-year students called the Great Issue Scholars, oh, yeah. and it's it's fantastic. And so many students like yourselves who maybe the program didn't exist when you started are like, I wish it was there. <laughs> but you know, it's it's this great opportunity when students are, are first starting at Dartmouth. We spread the word over orientation about the program, and, and, and first-year students can apply to be part of this. And we select a cohort of about 50 first-year students to spend the year with us at the center exploring a variety of international topics. So we connect them with speakers that are coming in from around the globe to have discussions. We are uh, doing shared readings. We're having discussions with professors on campus. We're connecting them um, in a variety of ways around campus so that by the time they hit the end of their first year, they really have a sense of what global opportunities exist at Dartmouth, mm -hmm. both curricularly and in terms of sort of those off-campus um, or co-curricular opportunities, and it's been really amazing to see how um, how well received that is, and that it's such a great opportunity for students new to campus to kind of get a sense because it can feel overwhelming. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, thank you. And um, we've talked a lot about um, service and going abroad with service trips or um, academic uh, programs, but um, what are the opportunities for um, internship? And fellowships that you can that you can take up that can take you abroad. Sure. So you know the. The Rockefeller Center on campus, for instance, offers a wide range of opportunities for students interested in things like public policy um, to to go abroad or even to work in D.C. on international topics or if someone is much more domestic and they're focused to, to do that work. So there's the, sort of that public policy mindset, maybe working with lawmakers or with larger scale governmental organizations. We've placed a number of students working in embassies abroad okay. or for the United Nations or various uh, U.N. projects abroad. Uh, we also... Uh, uh, through the Tucker Foundation, through the Dickey Center, through a variety of other places, send students out to do all sorts of internships. So we've had students who, uh, a big trend lately has been microfinance. Um, oh. Students are learning about it in the economics department or in their international development courses, and they want that real world experience that lets them sort of step out of the book and say, what does this really look like on the ground? And you know, in, in an eight to 10 week time frame, you can really get a sense of, is this what I want to do? Or how, what are those struggles? Um, so that's been a trend. We have a lot of students who go out, um, pre-med students looking for either clinical experiences, shadowing doctors perhaps, or looking at, um, you know, working with some of the partners that Dartmouth has around the globe. We have uh, a partnership in Tanzania. We call it our Dardar program, but it's, it's Dartmouth and Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. We send students every year 
um, out there. We have, we have students who go uh, interested in environmental study, mm -hmm. and they'll work. We've had, you know, I, I think one of my favorite internships that I that I've seen that's that's quite exciting is a student who was very interested in. Um, uh, ecology went off and worked in on the the coast of South Africa uh, tracking sharks. Oh wow! I know, quite a, you know. <laughs> so it, it's really up to the students to sort of find something that uniquely fits their interests, and we help point them in the right direction, um, and then provide the funding support to get them out there. So there's a really wide, wide range. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I didn't even realize that those internships offered. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's I feel like I'm incredible. learning so much right now, like <laughs> helping me plan the rest of my deep plan. Um, so. And I think that one thing also that I always like to talk about when it comes to internship opportunities at Dartmouth is not even just the um, different internships you can do, but the fact that since we have our um, unique D plan, that there the um, the opportunities are just infinite. Because um, so for those of you who don't know, we have um, a D plan, which is our academic uh, schedule, and basically we operate on quarters: fall, winter, spring, and summer. And you're required to be on campus your fall, winter, and spring of your freshman and senior years, and the summer of your sophomore year. And so then those other terms in between, you can take off, and you can be um, any part of the world doing any of these amazing things. And another thing that's really um, amazing about that is that all these programs that you mentioned are are um, either service things or um, or different different organizations that need help throughout the year right. but and while there are u many university students who would love to intern in these places in the summer there are obviously a finite number of uh, um, of opportunities in the summer whereas we can take them in the fall winter or spring when everyone else is taking classes we oftentimes see that that makes Dartmouth students much more competitive for internships that even a lot of undergraduates wouldn't normally get. So uh, the World Health Organization, as an example in Geneva, it's almost unheard of that an undergraduate student would get an internship there. And we've had quite a high success rate because students are flexible about when they can go and because we've had such a good track record that, you know, I would say we e pretty regularly are feeding students into to having that opportunity. And what an amazing thing when normally you have to be a master's level or higher right. to, to get that. Um, and, and so it, it, it does it it's definitely adds a competitive edge but gives a flexibility we also see a number of athletes who are able to go regardless of their um, you know their their training schedules I was just talking to a young woman today who um, has struggled with finding an, a way to or thought she had to struggle with uh, you know this this trade-off between her her interest in athletics and mm -hmm. um, a, and going abroad and we, we sort of talked through it and said now actually there's there's quite a bit of flexibility here so yeah. it, it's been pretty amazing to be able to to see the way that Dartmouth at first, you know, a glance kind of cumbersome D plan be a really amazing thing. And I think students really welcome it because you have so much option. Yeah, exactly. Like what you were saying about the athlete. And it, it's also similar with the people who do, as I mentioned, with the engineering. If you're taking, a, if you are an athlete and you have to be on campus during this one season, then just don't take that term off. And right. you just take a different term off right. and you still have a bevy of opportunities. Exactly. Um, so when you go off campus and you have these life changing experiences, what happens? happens when you come back to Dartmouth? <laughs> that might be a good one for you yeah, to answer, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> There are so many offices, the offices that give these, these funding opportunities, these offices that are, are kind of geared towards international understanding and global learning, um, are there just as they, they're there to kind of wave goodbye and, and send you off to welcome you back and help you integrate your experiences back into your studies. Um, also, uh, so many of our, our return students find themselves being called on in class by professors to really enrich the, the whole classroom experience, um, and they f can't like help but um, <laughs> really articulate the, the lesson that they learned and reflect on those through their yeah. coursework. Um, they find themselves uh, involved in student groups own even more, um, kind of leading, taking the lead and, and giving back to the programs um, that they benefited from before they left and um, they, they just get reinvigorated to, to kind of um, express their, their global learning um, experiences. Um, I know for, for the program that I work with, uh, there are debriefings that happen and um, where you get to kind of share your experiences with a group. There are also um, kind of targeted forums like the Student Forum on Global Learning that we have here every uh, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend mm -hmm. um, where, you know, I don't know how many students. 30, 40 students? Yeah, it's usually about 30 to 40 student presenters and, and now we've incorporated faculty um, into this, this conference as well. Yeah, they give these awesome 15, 20 minute kind of 
I, I like to view them as, as TED X, <laughs> right. like, yeah. like, like student TED talks of these these amazing experiences um, where they uh, they we invite other students to come in and participate and um, community members um, to to really hear these amazing experiences because we we all benefit and, and the students really get to kind of share what what meant most to them as they as they reflect on what they learned. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, amazing, yeah. I was going to say, too, I think um, oftentimes students who have gone out and had these experiences almost come back as almost like the, the peer advisors mm -hmm. yeah. for those going out because they get called upon to, to sort of talk about what that was like, but also the students thinking about going out you know, call out these students and say, well, I'm a little worried about this, or where where should I go? Where would I find housing? How would I, you know, and so people don't have to sort of go blindly. There's always a, a slew of students who have who have just come back and, and have a wealth of information to share, so. Right, and I think even the contacting each other is such a unique part of Dartmouth life. It's just our community, we're so willing to help each other. I can't tell you how many times I've been thinking about applying for a program or going to live in a city um, and I've said I'm you know I'm a little nervous and I just kind of casually mention it to one of my friends and they're like oh just talk to this person <laughs> like who you've never met and have literally no connection with they went on this program too they'd love to talk to you about it and it's never awkward it's always like a really great experience and it's not just it's not just undergrad students either it's young alums older alums there's 72,500 alums uh, one of our, the lines from our alma mater is around the girdled earth we roam yeah. and more and more of those it's alums true. are heading abroad um, and they're so willing to take on interns um, to act as both advisors for careers or, or just for internships it's a uh, it's pretty amazing I know multiple people who have who've interest in China and we have there's a pretty strong alumni uh, contingent in China that, that yeah are called on yeah. to help a lot it's really cool my mom is actually in China right now and she told me that yesterday they were at um, some just some random cafe or something and a person was wearing a Dartmouth yep. shirt and she was like do you did you go to Dartmouth like my son goes <laughs> to Dartmouth it's just so random you know yeah. it's great though um, and in terms of on campus like there are a lot of um, student groups and uh, that are committed committed to community service or um, various organizations that also go abroad. Um, do either of you want to talk a little bit about this? Sure, I, I can speak a little bit at the at the Dickey Center because our focus is international understanding. Um, all of our student groups that are housed at the center have an international focus of some sort, and um, we we have two student driven publications. One is on global health. Uh, it's all student stories and reflections on their experiences abroad, but specifically around global health. We also have a, a world affairs um, council that meets once a week and does dinner discussions, um, brings in a variety of speakers, um, touches on different topics. There's the Model United Nations. They just hosted um, for I, I don't know how many years in a row now they've been doing this uh, ever-expanding um, conference for high school students to yeah. come to Dartmouth and, and do the uh, Model UN um, a conference right here at Dartmouth. And this was actually the first year that they could say it was an international conference. They had a delegation in from Germany. Oh, wow. Uh, it, was, it was really impressive. So cool. uh, but it's completely student-driven. It's amazing to watch what happens. Um, and, th and there's a, wi a variety of other groups. We have a War and Peace Fellows Program. We have the Great Issue Scholars, which which is that, that first year program. Um, there, there's all sorts of, of ways that I think students can, can engage. There's a whole uh, other group of, of student organizations through the, the Tucker Foundation that have an international event in mm -hmm. terms of their, their interests. Um, but ultimately at the heart of it is either service or um, or spiritual uh, life. Um, we have our uh, COSO organizations or our Council on Student Organizations and Student Activities, and there's, I, I don't even know how yeah, many now, I, the I'm cultural COSO, organizations. I'm a COSO board member, and they're, a couple years ago, there were over 200 organizations run through COSO. It's amazing. Wow. Um, just last term, a group wanted to um, have kind of just like a, a one-shot um, fundraising group uh, where they'd climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Yeah. So they, they would get donations from family, other people, and they tried to tie in some uh, some educational components to it as well um, to, to fundraise for obstetric fistulas wow. and, and bring some awareness to campus around that. So there's just so many groups just popping up, um, really, really student-driven, as Amy said. Mm -hmm. is, I think that's the, the key, is there's just a lot of energy here. And uh, people, there's like a, almost like an energy agglomeration where people benefit from each other right. um, and, and kind of feed off each other's energy. You can always find other students who are who's probably interested in the same region, same mm -hmm. topic as you, and can make a student group because you know COSO and, and other um, funding boards have, have plenty of money and plenty of support to give too. Yeah. 
Um, so speaking a little bit um, academically about mm -hmm. um, ways to incorporate international understanding or international studies into your degree in terms of coming to Dartmouth, um, I know that the international studies minor is something that's fairly new. It is, actually. I think we just rolled it out about two years ago. Um, but it's it, we're really excited about it. The, the Dickey Center is the, the home for sort of the, the advising hub for that uh, program. And um, it's an interdisciplinary approach to international studies. So we have students that are engineering majors, that are creative writing focused, uh, you know, English majors. We have students who, um, through their their course of study, are looking at international development or geography. I mean, they're it really they're all all over the the, the campus. And uh, but that that common thread is that interest in international study as a whole. And so um, the the curriculum is is a, a six course. Uh, Slew, slew of um, you know language courses. Uh, there's some electives that students can choose from, and and then there's a, a, a sort of a set of four core courses that students take. And and what I like about it is not only the interdisciplinary approach, but that oftentimes our international study students are in the classes, um, in large part sort of together. So you know right now we have this this uh, course being offered uh, that's focused on culture and place and identity and how all those things intersect and how we understand who we are based in part on where we are and and um, this is a normally a comparative literature course, you know, but we have so many international studies minors in there. It's really exciting to see um, how that, in some ways, changes the, the the course and the curriculum. So it's 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 a wonderful opportunity, and it, it fits quite nicely in with any major. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah, and I think that there's such a global car culture at Dar Dartmouth right now that mm -hmm. the departments are responding by having more and more courses focus with kind of comparative global studies in mind and as you were saying earlier I just love um, Dartmouth's schedule and the liberal arts kind of um, culture here anybody from any major can take courses in any department yeah if you if you're bent on on learning about international development but you're an engineering major um, there's room for, for exactly. taking international development courses for even being a minor there's yeah. so many people here who are minors double majors modified majors um, it's really so accommodating yeah Absolutely. Well, we have um, a question for Amy. Sure. Uh, the question is, the director of Dickey is a former ambassador to Belarus. How does his experience in the field help Dickey and students? Uh, that's a great question. And actually, um, Ambassador Yalitz is a, a fabulous resource on campus. And he was um, a career diplomat, spent most of his time in the Soviet Union, and then uh, was able to serve as the U.S. ambassador to both Belarus and to Georgia. And he often meets with students one-on-one -on -one who are curious about work in the Foreign Service or uh, considering careers that that might take them to to the region mm -hmm. um, you know there's he has a lot of connections that he's always willing to um, you know connect students with he's just a fabulous resource for us in general um, he he brings a real international flavor in just from his own global perspective to everything that we do at the Dickey Center um, and and I, I so appreciate that and he's one of the most approachable people I've ever met so you know students just kind of wander down the hall and you know <laughs> find him and start up a conversation and he is just he's just wonderful so he's he's completely added um, you know a, a, a Especially for those students interested in, in policy or foreign service work, there's just a, such a tremendous resource there that is so accessible in a way that, that I, I, I was surprised to find when I started working at the Dickey Center. I'm pleasantly surprised to find. So. Yeah. Um, and we have a question, question for Chris as well. What has been the most meaningful international related experience for you at Dartmouth? I'd say undoubtedly um, an alternative spring break trip to the Dominican Republic that I did my freshman year and then led my sophomore year. I think because it just completely embodied what integrated learning um, meant and, and definitely set a tone for my experience here at Dartmouth. Um, there were educational seminars and, and team building exercises that we did for a whole um, 10 weeks before we left. Oh, wow. Uh, we really got to know each other, really got to study kind of the, the political and economic history of the region um, before we, we went down and kind of saw what that meant on the ground. Um, I think that the, the project really embodied partnership um, and uh, and we really got to know uh, community members, got to immerse ourselves, 
um, but also had such a Dartmouth community too. And, mm -hmm. and we, we came out of that trip and uh, the, the whole um, educational and trip experience as a family. We st uh, some of my best friends uh, to, to this day are, are members from that trip, which happened my freshman year. Yeah. Um, and I think it was just it was really cool because I got to draw on that experience, that immediate spring term that I got back, and and have drawn on it since, kind of being critical of of some aspects of international development and service work, but also um, taking those lessons of partnership of 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 how history and colonialism plays into uh, the world today and, and, and some of the, the great issues that, that we as a generation and, and as uh, I guess future leaders uh, need to confront um, undoubtedly one of the best. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Amy, and thank you, Chris, so much for giving us all this wonderful information about Dartmouth. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the chat today. Um, please visit our website, www.dartmouth.edu slash admissions, for videos, blogs, pictures, and frequently asked questions to learn more about Dartmouth. Um, and every Thursday, join us at 6 p.m. Eastern for the Office Hours Student Edition, where you can ask any of your questions that you may have, and I'm sure you have many because you're about to come to college. Um, and if you are planning a visit to campus, check out our tour and information session schedule, which is available on online. And stay tuned each month for more news from Dartmouth Admissions. Thanks so much.